welcome to Inside Magazine. I'm David Matlin. Well, after the murderous attack at the B'nai Torah Synagogue, hit and run and bulldozer attacks, stabbings and multiple arrests, Jerusalem seems to be a powder keg ready to explode. Well, the wave of violence that started this summer has continued. In the media and political rhetoric, the same questions appear. Is coexistence between Jews and Arabs possible? Will the Holy City be the theater of a religious war that brings fire to the streets? The Israeli government promised to take strict measures to contain the situation, but day by day it deteriorates. The tension is nearing a breaking point. Well, here's Jerusalem on the brink of explosion, a report by Serge Dumont for I-24 News. Even after four months of riots and vehicular attacks, the murders at Jerusalem's B'nai Torah synagogue on November 18th stunned the Israeli public. Attacking a place of worship is not a trivial matter. It's an escalation of the use of terror. The Israeli police mobilized its forces to prevent the outbreak of violence. They called up reservists and set up roadblocks at the entrance to Arab neighborhoods. The Israeli police have been dealing with uh, ongoing disturbances through different periods over the last few weeks since the IDF operation Protective Edge. And a strategic decision was made in Jerusalem to prevent and respond to any incidents that will take place inside the neighborhoods. As always in times of stress, restrictions were imposed during the Muslim Friday prayers on the Flashpoint Temple Mount. Limiting the ages of worshippers only causes further incidents and strengthens the false rumor, blaming the Jews for wishing to control the place in order to rebuild their temple. A status quo agreement endorsed by Israel ensures that the Temple Mount is run by Muslim religious authorities and the Jews can visit but not pray. But in recent months, Jewish extremists have decided to challenge the agreement despite opposition from Benjamin Netanyahu and the chief rabbinate. Rabbi Yehuda Glick, leader of the movement, was attacked on October 29th. Since then, his deputy, Yaakov Heyman, has taken over. Since the Six Day War in June 1967, Israel returned to its national home. To our great regret, since then Jews have not had the right to pray there. Those who are not Muslims are discriminated against in every way possible. An active minority, the Temple Mount Faithful, as they are known, insists they're not provocateurs and want Jews to receive the same treatment as Muslims. The status quo cannot continue. For us, the Temple Mount is sacred, not the status quo. But Palestinians see them as blasphemous. The union leader in East Jerusalem, Manawal Issa Abdelal, argues that the presence of Jews at this site exacerbates the frustrations of the Arab population and leads to further violence. The Israeli extreme right pushes all Israelis to extremism. I'm not optimistic. I see something red on the horizon, not something pink. When the Israeli government say there is no problem of cohabitation in Jerusalem, that's a big lie. There has never been good or common life. Nothing. It is because of this that the situation is deteriorating more and more.
incidents are endless. Stone throwing and Molotov cocktails burn cars and now affect all Arab neighborhoods. At the foot of Mount Scopus, Isawiya has become one of the epicenters of the riots. On October 30th, young thugs burned and looted the only gas station in the area, a company that employed their relatives. Mayor Adler, the owner of the damaged property, is still in shock, but he refuses to believe that this is the beginning of the Third Intifada. When this happened, there were Arab workers living here in Jerusalem, and they were also threatened. But a salary is stronger than anything, so they continue to work. I think it is only a local uprising. It is the politicians that define this as an intifada, but it's not. Yet his Palestinian neighbors take a different approach. The chairman of the committee of the Issawiya residents, Mahmoud Abu Hummus, swears that it will be an uprising that will last a long time. This is the beginning of a new intifada, and this will not be a normal intifada, but a religious intifada in the name of Islam against the Jews. We are prevented from entering our neighborhood, and that's what causes terror, not peace. Netanyahu says he seeks to bring peace in Jerusalem, but he will not. We too want peace and quiet, but on condition that our honor as human beings is respected, this is the most important. A few kilometers away, the Shuafat refugee camp is also a hotbed of unrest. Clashes between young Palestinians and Israeli police are common. <laughs> Facing Shuafat, the settlement of Ramat Shlomo is populated by religious Jewish families who fear a spillover of the violence. Like Yaakov Pinsky, they yearn for the resumption of dialogue. The neighborhood has been a very quiet neighborhood, very peaceful neighborhood. Um, we really have never had any trouble from our neighbors. I remember times when um, they, the neighborhood of Shuafat, would visit our neighborhood and um, vice versa. Ramat Shlomo is an integral part of Jerusalem, but is close to the outskirts of Ramallah. Its residents fear that the violence might spread to the West Bank, where the army has also been placed on alert. During the course of the day, early morning, late at night, really any time, we uh, hear helicopters flying by. When we know, when we hear those helicopters flying by, then it sends off a, a red light to, uh, to everyone. Personally, we feel that um, there's something in the air, not just the helicopter, but it's a bit scary, and uh, we become more sensitive to what's going on around us once we hear the helicopters. My daughter told me last night, she said, um, you know, I'm, I'm afraid to go on the bus to school tomorrow morning. What should I do? And it's something that we have to deal with, and it is a, a trauma for everyone. The blood also flows around settlements, which have seen more attacks in three months than throughout all of 2013. In Jerusalem and the West Bank, the population calls for a firmer response from the authorities. The group Israel Shali, or My Israel, demonstrates every week at the entrance to Jerusalem to demand an iron-fisted policy. Its president, Sarah Cohen, hopes that the movement will grow. The main reason we, we came here this evening is to wake up the Israeli government because the situation that uh, is here in Israel in the last few months here in Jerusalem, in Tel Aviv, in uh, Judea and Samaria is impossible. We cannot continue to, uh, to um, have murder, uh, people that getting murdered, uh, babies that getting murdered. As for the more radical, they threaten to take the law into their own hands. This is the case of Moshe, the leader of a group of young people who've organized themselves into a self-defense group in the West Bank. Of course we are ready to fight. Many friends are like me. The army prepares people for war in all communities. I do not know if everyone will have the strength to fight, but everyone has the will.
to Hillel Cohen, a professor at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem, whether one calls these events intifada or a mere uprising, what counts are the reasons that cause it. The subject is the settlement of Jews in the eastern part of the city. More Jews are entering homes in neighborhoods like Silwan, Ras al Almud, Abu Tol. And this is problematic since the peoples feel under occupation. Add to these two problems unemployment and lack of housing. All those who walk in Jerusalem see the lack of housing. The majority of people who want to build do not receive permission, so they do it without a license. Either we destroy their building or not, but either way they feel threatened. In all this, the question of sovereignty over the Temple Mount is the spark that ignites the powder. The more Israeli attempts to establish Jewish sovereignty over the Temple Mount, or to expand the Jewish presence, or to increase prayers on the Mount, the more the balance is threatened. The tension has not been this bad since the early 2000s. The tourism sector has recorded a 60% decline. In Jerusalem, business has fallen by a third in just a few months. With the lack of peace prospects, the situation is likely to deteriorate further with the political crisis in Israel in the background. Serge Dumont in the studio. Serge, thank you for joining us here. Uh, in recent days, at least, uh, the discussion has shifted away from this wave of violence. Not as much coverage in the media, certainly internationally, yet the attacks continue every day. With the media n'en parle plus et c'est bizarre. Yes, the media stopped talking about it and it's odd. plus ou moins une dizaine. Ça va de la Attacks keep taking place every day, about 10 a day, from car ramming attacks to assassination attempts with a knife or an axe, murder of cocktail throwing on police cars and fire trucks. It happens all the time. A few days ago, there were Kalachnikov shootings in a civilian bus. So what is going on is very serious, but apparently it was decided to stop talking about it because more important things happen elsewhere. Now the term intifada, a very charged term, powerful term here in this conflict, it's been used a lot now in the media, a lot of people speculating about whether this is or should be called an intifada, an uprising by the Palestinians, but it's a controversial term. Uh, it's one that the Israeli government is hesitating to use. Why is that? It is a scary term because there was already an intifada in the late 80s and a second one in the early uh, 2000s, causing many deaths. Now the government doesn't want to use this term, especially because official Palestinian organizations did not really come into play. Fatah and Hamas aren't directly involved in these clashes. They do deliver statements of victory after every attack, but in fact, the perpetrators don't receive orders neither from Gaza nor from Ramallah. That's why it's not an intifada, and the Israeli security services consider it as a popular uprising. Well, despite uh, how bad the situation is already, how big is the risk for further deterioration? Well, there is a high risk of a deterioration, precisely because this movement emanates from the streets. It doesn't receive orders, it is not organized, we cannot negotiate, we cannot discuss. These are groups of youngsters who decide to commit their own acts, their own attacks, without being accountable to anyone. So they can do anything, the way they want, whenever they want. Moreover, there is another risk deriving from the fact that Fatah and Hamas don't really get along anymore within their national unity government. So if this government collapses, and it probably will soon, each one of these organizations will try to prove it is the most resilient one against the occupation. Now, 
There is a third reason, the current situation in Israel. The government is now dismantled, there are no longer negotiations and peace process for a long time. So there is a huge void. And when there is a void, there is always violence in this particular region. Quand il y a des vides, il y a toujours de la violence dans cette région-ci. Serge, do you see any positive outcome coming out of this situation now? Any hope? Personnellement, moi j'ai l'impression que ça va être de pire en pire. Personally, I feel it is going to be worse and worse because more and more youngsters are getting involved. When we went to the Arab neighborhoods in Jerusalem, I saw with my own eyes 12, 13 years old kids ready to fight who explained us that they must kill the Zionist enemy and so on. They said they didn't believe in peace. They didn't believe in the Palestinian Authority that Mahmoud Abbas was an old man for whom they had no interest. So these people will do anything. They are prepared to go very far and beyond. Serge Jumont, thank you very much for being with us. Thank you. And thank you for being with us here at Insight. We'll see you again next week at the same time.